Hello, learners. You are welcome to the Junior High School R on the Joy Learning Channel. My name is Colin J. Mensa, and I'll be your facilitator, taking you through the Information and Communication Technology, ICT. In today's lessons, we are looking at the use of the drawing toolbar, the use of the drawing toolbar. And by the end of the lesson, the learner will be able to identify and locate different drawing tools on the drawing toolbar. Identify and locate different drawing tools on the drawing toolbar. And the learner will also be able to draw, to draw shapes and other images in word present using the tools on the drawing toolbar. So how to identify tools on the drawing toolbar and how to use those tools to create images. Before we look at this one, let's look at how, what, or how we would define a toolbar. Let me say a toolbar. A toolbar is simply any bar that contains tools. And it is these tools that will give us easy access to commands and procedures. So a toolbar is any bar that contains tools, giving easy access to commands and procedures. Tools in the various toolbars can be accessed under the ribbon. When we were looking at the features of Microsoft Word, we saw every tab, we saw the, the tab feature and the ribbon feature. And we said it is on these tabs, on these tabs, you have the home tab, you have the insert tab, you have the page layout, and the rest. These tabs contains various ribbons. In the home tab contains the home ribbons. The insert tab contains the insert ribbon. The page, lay the page layout tab also contains the page layout ribbons. So the various tools under the various tabs make up the, the various tools under the various ribbons all contains various tools that will help us to carry out our work. So tools in the various toolbars or ribbons can be accessed by clicking on the tabs. So for you to access the home ribbon or the home tools, you click on the home tab. For, for you to access the insert ribbon or the insert tools, you click on the insert tab. So if you click on the insert tab here, there are various groups as well. We said the various tabs contain the, the ribbons and in this, these ribbons are put into different groups. So if you move to the insert tab, we can have the table group, the illustrations group, and the other groups are there. So our main focus is on the drawing toolbar. So we say the drawing tools can be accessed or located by clicking on the insert tab. So if you click on the insert tab, we have the table group, the illustration group. But we said the drawing tools can be located within the illustrations group. So all the various groups are divided by a border or a line. So under the illustrations group, you see the insert or the drawing tools. You see the drawing tools there. As simple as that. So the drawing tools can be accessed by clicking on the insert tab. If you click on the insert tab, because of the various groups there, you locate the drawing tools under the illustrations group. So if you click on the illustrations group, there are some options there. For shapes, we have shapes, we have pictures, and the rest are also there. But our focus is mainly on the shapes and the pictures. The shapes and the pictures. So if you click on shapes, we have a group of shapes, we have its description, and we have the examples. So the first group under the shape you see there is the recently used shapes. Recently used shapes. Maybe you just used a shape. Maybe you just drew 
a rectangle or a star or anything. So that one will be under the recently used shape. This shape, the shapes, the shapes in this group is based on what was last used. The shapes in this recently used shapes is based on the shape that was last used. So if you just used maybe a rectangle or just used a star, you will see the rectangle and the star as the example there, as the example there, because that was the two that was recently used. The next group is the lines group. The lines group provide a variety of lines and arrows. So if you want to draw a line, you move to the line group. You move to the, you move to the line group in the shape drop-down menu. We have the, shape, the shapes here. If you click, it has a, a drop-down menu there. So if you click on the shapes drop-down menu, that's where you see these groups you are talking about. You see recently used, recently used up here, recently used. With the shapes there, then we have the lines, lines too, with these shapes, with the various lines there. Examples of these lines, we have lines as well. We have arrows. You can have double arrows, curves, and free form. So we can have in this group, we can have the line itself. We can also have the arrows. We can also have double arrows, arrows with two points. Then we can also have the curve. Then you can have maybe a free form. A free form. All these are located in the line groups because it said the line group contains a variety of lines and arrows. Then you also have the basic shape. So after that one, you see the basic shape here. The basic shape is also there. In this basic shape, it contains the geometrical or the geometric shapes that are commonly used for drawing the geometric shapes so that one too we have the test box the test box is also here we have the test box we have the rectangle we have triangle we also have a circle oval and the hat all these tools are located in the basic shape group. Then we also have the block arrows. The block arrows too is there. The block arrows consist of a variety of block arrows in different shapes. Block arrows in different shapes and styles. So we have block arrow. We have the block arrow there. Now one, two examples are the right arrow. This time round, it's because it's a block arrow, right. Right goes this way, sorry. So we have the right arrow there. We also have the up arrow. The up arrow is also there. Then we have the quad arrow. Now one, two. Mm -hmm. That one too can be an option there. And we have the U10 arrow also there. Then we have flowcharts. Flowcharts too is a group in the shapes drop down menu. So they are all var variety of shapes. Flowcharts. They are all variety of shapes that are located in the shapes drop down menu. And it consists of call outs. Sorry, it provides different shapes required for flowcharts. And we have the process, process, then the decision, the data connector, extract, and document. All those are shapes that are also in the flowcharts. Then we have callouts. Callouts consist of different callout shapes and designs. It can be a rectangular callout, a callout normally used for animations. If somebody says something, it is put in a callout. So we have maybe 
a rectangular call out. Maybe what the person is saying or what the person wants to say. Then we have the cloud call out. That's the, 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 the normal one everybody uses. If somebody is having an imagination or the person is talking, we use the, the call out. We also have the oval call out and the line call out. Then the last one too is the stars and banners. So if you want to draw a shape, you select from all, you can select from any of these groups. You can select from the recently used group. We can select from the lines group. We can select from the basic shapes. You can select from the block arrow. You can select from flow charts, call out, or the stars and the banners. All these ones are shapes in the shape drop down menu. Now let's look at the steps we will follow to insert a shape. The steps we will follow to insert a shape. If we, if we just saw where the shapes are located. We said for us to locate the shapes, we need to move to the insert tab. In the insert tab, because it has various groups in, the, in its ribbons, we move to the illustration group because it's, uh, it is under the illustration group that we can see our shapes and our pictures and the uh, other tools. So, in, so the first step is to click on the insert tab. Click the insert tab. If you click, if you click the insert tab, it will display the ribbons, the insert ribbons with its various groups. The next step is to move to the illustrations group. In the illustrations group, we have tools like the insert picture, insert word art, insert other options, insert what? Shapes. So from the illustrations group, we just click on shapes. When you click on shapes, we just saw the shapes drop down menu there for us. Select your preferred shape from the group. So the option is to select your preferred shape from any of these groups. We have the group names here. We have the group names here. We have the recently used shape. We have the lines group. We have the basic shape group. We also have the block arrow group. We have the flow chart. We have the call out. So you select your preferred shape from any of the tools. Then you move to the work area. Then you drag and drop. So the first step, we click on the insert tab. After clicking on the insert tab, we move to the illustrations group. Illustrations group. Then we select our shape. In this shape, there's a drop down menu there. So we click our, the drop down menu. The groups are there. Maybe you want to draw a circle or a, a, a square. So we select the rectangle tool. The, re the rectangle tool is located under the geometric group. In the geometric group here, or the basic shape here, we have the test tool, the rectangle tool, the triangle, the circle, the oval, and the hat. So we move to that group, the basic shape, and then we select the rectangle because a square can be obtained or we can, we can get a square from a rectangle. Then you move to the work area there. The work area is a white blank space provided for typing or for inserting of documents. Then we are saying the next thing is to drag to draw. And we said dragging is holding the left mouse button while moving the mouse. So with your two rectangle tool that has been selected, since you want to draw a square, you hold on to the shift key. You put your hand on the shift key while you draw the rectangle. So as you are drawing the rectangle, it will turn out to be a square. It will turn out to be a square. Because it's not drawn to scale, let's assume this is a square. So you get your rectangle from your, or you can follow the same shape there, the same steps, insert illustration, click on the shapes, which brings out the drop-down menu, then you can select maybe 
the triangle, the triangle. Then you can move on. So you drag to draw. Then let's look at the parts of the shape there. After drawing, a part the shape will get some dots around it. And then something like a circle, something like this. So the parts of this image here, or the part of the shape, we have the, the rotate and then the handle. The rotate and the handles. The rotate, as the name implies, is used to turn the image upside down or any other rotation you prefer, whether clockwise rotation or anti-clockwise rotation. So if the triangle is this and you rotate it, Maybe it can be something like this now. It means you have rotated it to another angle. Then the handles. The handles are normally used to enlarge or reduce the size of the ship. So if you enlarge it, you can enlarge it, then you get a rectangle like this from this particular image we drew. So the rotate is used to turn the image to whether a clockwise rotation or anti-clockwise rotation and the handle is used to enlarge or decrease the size of the image. Now let's look at the steps you follow to move a shape. Maybe the shape is here, you want to move it to another location. You position the pointer over the shape. You position the pointer over, over the shape. So as you click on the image, the handles will appear the handles will appear. Then you click and drag, you click, hold and drag. So if you move, if you click on the image, it will turn to the move, the move cursor. The move cursor will be on the image. The move cursor will be on the image. If you click on the image, this particular cursor will appear for you. So the next step, is to click on the left mouse button, hold the left mouse button, and then drag to your desired location. So as you are, as it tends to the move cursor like this, you click and hold the left mouse button and you drag it to move the shape to another location. Then, how to resize? I said the handles will help us to enlarge or decrease it. So. Position the pointer over the shape. If you select or if you select it, it will bring out the handles and the rotate. Then we said click, hold, and drag the handles, as I, as I just said. So you click, if you want to enlarge it to this particular side, you drag it, you drag this particular handle here. If you put a cursor on it, it will turn to the resize. It's called the resize cursor. If we had, if we had seen the examples of cases and their names and when they are used they are used so when you move the cursor to that particular handle it will turn to the resize so if you drag it so it will, if you drag down it will enlarge the image but if you drag upwards it will reduce the size of the image then we look at how to rotate instead we have the rotate and then the handles so the rotate is when you now want to you position the cursor over the shape. If you click on the shape as usual, the handles and the rotate will appear. So you click, hold, and drag. So you click, you hold, you click on on the rotate. Then you hold the left, you click the left hand button, you hold it, and then you move the cursor. As you are moving, it will rotate from this particular look this particular shape to this particular one it means you have turned it upside down or you have turned it another way altogether then as soon as you click on the image if you click on the image another another tab will appear for you this tab it's an imaginary tab. It only appears when the image is selected. 
that tab is called the format tab. It's called the format tab. So when you insert an image, the format tab appears. And this tab includes what? Ribbons like the insert shape, shape styles, shadow effects, 3D effects, arrange, size. That cannot that can be used to format the, the shape. When we're looking at formatting, we said changing the appearance of text. So this one, you want to change the appearance of the image. So all these tools in the format ribbon can help us to apply 3D to the image, apply shadow effects to the image, uh, arrange the image in sizes, and can also help us to insert other shapes to add up to the image there. And then let's look at some of the functions of, which we saw the, sh the, the shapes in various groups, the basic shape, the lines, the flow, the flow chart, the callouts, and the others also in the format tab. So the first one is the line. The line is used to draw straight lines. This one is just straightforward. If you select the line two, the line two cannot help you to draw a circle. It is only used to draw straight lines. So the line two is used to draw straight lines. Then we have the rectangle two. It's also used to draw rectangles, but you can also say it's used to draw quadrilaterals. Because quadrilaterals also have four-sided figures. Then the oval. The oval two can be used to draw a circle. If you select the oval, if you select the oval, just as we're able to draw a square from a rectangle, selecting the oval tool can help us draw a circle. So that one too, you, you hold on to the shift key as you are drawing. If your hand is on the shift key, as you are drawing the oval, it becomes a circle. So the oval tool is used to draw a circle. Then we have the text box. The text box is also used to type text in an image. Maybe you have drawn this particular circle here. And you want to put or you want to type text in the image, you use the text box. Maybe you want to type hello. You want to type hello. So after drawing the image, selecting the oval tool and drawing the circle, you select the text box. You click inside the image. It will bring it into edit mode where you can type the text. After typing it, you just press enter. Then you have your word inserted in the image. Then we have arrow. We saw arrows in the line two as well. The arrows too is used to draw arrows. Then we have triangle. It's used to draw triangles. They are all straightforward. Then we have rounded rectangle. Rounded rectangle too is used to draw rectangles with round edges. So we have a rectangle with round edges. Round edges. That's a rounded rectangle. It's used to draw rectangles with round or with curved edges. Then we have the curve itself. The curve is also used to draw curved lines. The curve is used to draw curved lines. Instead, we are looking at how to use the drawing toolbar to insert images and then shapes. We just look at how to insert shapes. Now we're looking at inserting pictures, inserting pictures in Word documents. What are some of the reasons, reasons why you have to insert a picture into your Word document? The first reason or the first importance is that it gives your document a professional look. It makes the, uh, the, the readers of your document see you to be a professional because inserting a picture will give your document a professional look. And then pictures can be used to support the content in your document. Maybe you're, you're, you're talking about mountains. The mountains do this, mountains do that. So you can insert 
the picture of a mountain in the document to support what you are talking about. If you are talking about cars, you just want to insert a picture of a car in the document to support the content you are talking about. And then, the other regions are there, but let's keep on to these two. Then we look at the steps to insert a picture. The steps to insert a picture. Steps to insert a picture. With, as we said, the drawing, tool, the drawing tools are listed in the Insert tab. If you click on the Insert tab, under the Illustrations group, you will see the drawing tools there. We have the, all of them are under the Illustrations group. So under the Illustrations group, you see shapes or you see pictures. So the first step to insert a picture is to place the cursor at the location you want the picture to be. This is the Word document here. Maybe you want, it, you want the picture to be here. You want the picture to be here. Then you move to the Insert tab. Click on the Insert tab. You move to the Illustrations group. Then under this group, you see the shapes and the pictures. So you click on the picture icon. When you click on the picture icon, because the default location for keeping pictures is my picture document or my picture folder. My picture folder is the default location for keeping picture images. It will open that place for you. After clicking on the picture icon in the tab, it will open my pictures because my pictures is the default location for keeping image files. Then you locate the picture you want to insert. Maybe this, this image is a car. This image is a house. This image is food. So to support the content you're talking about, maybe you're talking about houses, and you want to insert a picture to support the content house. That's what you're talking about. After opening this dialog box, you select the tool you want to in you select the file you want to insert, then you click insert or you click open, depending on the version you are using. So place the cursor there, you have done that. Click on the insert tab, you have clicked there. In the group, click on the picture icon. This is the illustration group. You have clicked the picture icon. Then we said it will open the picture dialog box, which default location is the picture folder. In the picture folder, we have the car file, we have the house file, and we have the food file. So you select the picture you want to insert. That's the house, house file, and then you click on insert. After clicking on insert, the house image, because we place the cursor here, the image will not come here. The cursor shows you where your content will appear from. So the house image file will be there for us. This is one way of inserting a picture. Another way of inserting a picture is by using the copy and paste approach. You open the folder that contains the picture. Maybe the picture, this picture is in my document or in my pictures. So you open my pictures folder. That one too can help. When you open my pictures folder, then you locate the folder you want to copy or you want to insert. So you right click that picture. Maybe this time I want to insert the car. So you right click on the car file. When you right click, the context menu will appear. In this context menu, we have open, we have edit, we have cut, paste, we have properties, we have delete. We want to copy. So after right clicking on the car file, you select copy. When you, when you select copy, then you open the Word processor by default, you are, you are still using Microsoft Word. So, if you open the Word application, you place the cursor where you want to insert a picture, then you right click. When you, when you right click, another 
contest menu will appear for you. Then you select paste. You select paste from the contest menu. Then this time around, the car, the car will be inserted in the Word document. So any any of this approach is accepted. You can use it. You can insert the picture using the insert tab, or you can use insert the picture using the copy and paste approach. Now let's look at some picture terms. We have test wrapping. Test wrapping is a tool that allows tests to be placed either on top, behind, or around the pictures. A test can be placed on top of the picture, can be placed behind the picture, or it can be placed around the picture. Some of these options include square, tight, behind test, or in front of test. Let's look at these examples. So these are uh, Word documents here. We have the house we have inserted there. Then we are seeing test wrapping is a tool that allows test to be placed around or behind or on top of the picture. So maybe this is my house. This is my house. This is my house. That's the test. And we are seeing the test wrap tool. It's an option or it's a tool that will help us to place this test either around the image or in front or beside or any other thing. So this is my house. Applying the test to this is my house. This tool, this particular wrapping may be, may be behind or by test behind around it's called it's around the picture this is then the image is there then my test or we can make the image go behind the test so the image is here and we see this is because we have made the test behind the image we will not see the mind but we only see house because the image is blocking the or is behind or is in front. Sorry, the image is in front of the test. Mine. Or we can make the image go, be, go behind and the test come in front. So if you see the image is here. So we can have this is my house. In this instance, we have made the image go behind and the test come in front. So that's the test wrapping, a tool that will allow us to either place the test in front or behind or above. Normally, behind books, um, if you are right, talking about the author, you see the author's, the author's image here, then the test is here, and then here. It means you have applied a test wrapping feature to that particular image there. Then another picture term is what you call cropping. Cropping. When we say cropping, we're talking about the removal of the outer parts of an image. The removal of the outer parts of an image to improve framing and to emphasize, to emphasize the subject matter. So if you are cropping an image, it simply means you are removing the outer parts of that particular image to lay emphasis on the test or the image itself. Maybe as we inserted the image here, we inserted the, the house, there is too much space here. There is too much space there. And that space is really not necessary. So we can crop the image by removing these outer parts of the image so that we can improve upon the we can improve upon the framing and also lay emphasis on the image you want to talk about. In the document pictures are crawled from the format tab. 
So it means if you, if you click on the Format tab, as I said, selecting the image, if you select the image, the Format tab will appear. And it's, it is under this Format tab that contains the Crop tool. So you can crop, you select the image, the, only the image, and then you either press Enter to clear the outer parts of the image here to clear or to remove the outer part, then we lay emphasis on only the image. So that's cropping, to remove the outer part of an image, to lay emphasis on the image, or to also enable framing of the subject matter. In summary, what have we learned today? You have been able to identify and locate different drawing tools. We saw the tools in the shape drop down menu and then there are uses we are able to draw in a word processing using the drawing tools we, we just inserted an image and we're able to draw a triangle and we're able to draw a square then we were able to uh, apply the handle tools the how to use the handle and then how to rotate all these ones are there then we are also able to identify the various tools we have the line group we have the basic shape group we have the block arrow group we have the flow charts and the call outs hope you enjoyed today's lessons my name is Collins J Mensah hope to see you another time take care and be safe bye bye <laughs>